I've, uh, I've seen technology really advance in the last 20 years from days of carrying papers into the house to, to get it passed on so we can do our billing to slowly putting things into a computer to now everything's happening in real time. And uh, with happening in real time, I'm here today to talk to it about uh, Feed It, DG Pro, and Deliver It. I can now make decisions right out the chute when an animal comes in. I can see what its uh, weight is when it come in, what drugs it's had, treatments. As soon as it comes in, the RFID tag is scanned and all information comes up. This is what the screen would look like when the animal comes in. Mm -hmm. And we go to process or it just tells you what the drugs are right there. And you can just, it's just a breeze to go through and your crew knows exactly what they're supposed to be doing and the drugs that they're supposed to be given. This is this screen here. Whoops. The group processing screen shows the animal information, treatments to be administered, birth dates if, if the producer has entered when that happened. And it just gives you the total information on the average and the average of the total lot. So you can go to work and, and figure out how long you need to do and what your implanting strategies are going to be. The animal activity screen is when an animal, you pull an animal and you bring them up. You can see how often that animal has been treated and what his weight's been doing so you can administer the proper drugs. You're not underdosing or overdosing. Feeding, this is the biggest thing I like about it is it gives consistency and it holds your feed driver accountable to what's going into the truck and into the pens. It, it just keeps track of everything. This screen I'm not really familiar with. It's in an upgrade that I'm in the process of working on with ITS. I'm hoping to have it by late this week or the beginning of next week. But I'm told with this upgrade that you can put your ration changes in. You can put how many days in and the computer will automatically alert you of the ration change and do the ration change. So a pen doesn't get left behind. This is just a screen that keeps track of what the, the uh, pens are doing on a call, whether they crash or you know, they're gaining or their intake. This is, when I'm in the feed truck, this is the screen that comes up and it tells you um, what's been fed, what needs to be fed, where you are, where you need to go. And uh, if you go over on a ration or an ingredient, the computer recalculates that. So your rations aren't out of balance. Like before this, if you went over 150 pounds on your barley, most guys just carried on. This will just recalculates it. And the benefits of it, it's just, it holds your feed truck drivers accountable and it tracks, it's easy to track your inventory. Because if you're over on an ingredient, most guys won't write that down. So it just helps you plan better and you know, keeps your inventory more in check. In the office, it gives you reporting data so you can re review the information. I can break lots down and see their costs. I can track cattle and the inventory effectively. And you know, uh, you can use security settings. So the cost and billing can only be viewed by management. Your whole staff doesn't have access to what your costs are and what the billing information is. Lot management screen. You can see all charges that are going to certain lots. 
and a worksheet is available with this program to help calculate your break-even points. The reporting inventory, the reporting module is really great. I really like it. I can get withdrawal in like a matter of seconds, so I'm not sending animals accidentally out of a pen that have a withdrawal issue left on them. Um, accurate feed invoices, closeouts. Um, and I use the pen call versus actual for my end of day feed sheet so I can see what the driver has done and make sure that nothing has been over or underfed a great deal. And it just makes planning and calling my bunks in the morning that much easier. This is a conclusion of uh, the ITS and their program of what it does. This is for your costs with ITS, with the Growing Forward program. My average cost with everything in was 11350 And I potentially available through the Growing Forward program. I'd received 7945 back in grants. So it's about $3,400 would be my cost. And then my licensing for a year is about 5500 bucks. There's the websites and where you can get the information to get what qualifies and what doesn't. And I guess that's my pitch. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Pat Koontz. We farm northeast of Calgary. My brother and my dad and I, um, medium sized farm. We seed about 2,000 acres and all in all, uh, closer to 3,000 acres with the hay and, and uh, pastures and whatnot. We were on a 100 cow herd and we finish on a seasonal basis between 1,300 and 1,800 head. Um, all these cattle are received from other farmers and ranchers and we finish them and they all get shipped to Cargill. We've dealt with a little bit with JBS with Brooks but most of them uh, will end up at Cargill. Um, we started as a backgrounding lot when we first bought the farm uh, in 94 and we backgrounded till about 2006 and started um, finishing, finishing cattle then. All the cattle are kept on an online database called uh, Herd Tracks. It was all developed <coughs> by our vet. Um, we started uh, kind of in a similar fashion, you know, using cards and, and um, paper to keep track of uh, all the treatments and all the billing and everything like that and that moved to an access database and from there we went online and now we're at a point where we have more complete traceability from from birth the records then get um, transferred to us in the same in the same system all the cow calf producers have uh, have their records on the same database and it's all online so it's basically on the same system throughout um, and then when we finish the cattle all the by that time we'll have collected about 16 different uh, data points or uh, performance sets including um, marbling scores and yield grades and uh, carcass weights and feedlot performance um, and that all gets put back on the cow's record and it accumulates um, calf after calf basically gives us a record of the performance of the offspring of the cow, right? Um, so that's what we do and how we end up uh, rating cows basically. That's the premise of, of, um, of our whole program. Of course we, we custom feed cattle and, and, and try to make money at that and there's obviously last year was a 
less fun year, I would say. Uh, previously, I don't, uh, you know, we've we've had very good years, and uh, I would say that that the business side of the feedlot is is very similar when we're in situation situations very similar to other feedlots. I think that we receive much lower risk cattle because they're they're all ranch direct, and all these guys that we deal with um, retain some ownership in the cattle, so they're. It's in their best interest to have a good vaccine program, and and we also know what they've given to the cattle, and and can continue on and add to that. Um, so, in addition to the whole traceability thing that we do this year, new to us, we also installed or had installed um, grow safe systems, and it basically scans. Uh, the RFID tags and weighs them every time they go and drink so we can keep track of gains a lot closer. Um, I haven't, in spring we'll see how it works with sorting and whatnot. It, they ha there's a spray can involved and it sprays, you can select animals on, on the computer in the office and it will mark animals that uh, that you want sorted off or that you want to sort of sort off later that day or the next day or however that works i haven't done that right now we're mostly keeping track of of um, lower performing cattle and it gives us a list of flagged animals every day and we decide based on looking at at the at the chart of how they do just decide whether to pull them and then we go into the pen and actually look at them and, and, and see if there is something wrong with them and, or if it was just kind of a, a false positive. I guess we, on the technology side, it would be very tough to do, going back to herd tracks, to keep track of everything, especially on a going forward basis with multiple calves and, and averaging the performance of those calves. It would be hard to do it if it if we didn't have a program like her tracks. I think we're in a the time we're in right now we it's it's we have a lot of data and we need to somehow make use of it. And in order to make use of it we need to package it in a way that we can actually read it and and translate it into something that's that we can make decisions on. I remember when we first got um, a yield mapping system on our 2388 combine and I ended up with a yield map but it was it basically told me exactly what I knew. I, I knew there was lower performing areas in the field and I knew where the higher performing areas were and it wasn't really something that I could make decisions off of. Whereas I think more and more now we're starting to see um, this data, the ability to accumulate it and to make it into a package that's actually legible and you don't have to have a, a huge book about it and uh, then you can make decisions on it very quickly. Basically our, our herd health what we pay for herd health to our vet is it covers um, the system, so it's included in that. It's probably a bit simpler than what you just seen um, the previ previous producers show. It also does feed. I currently, I do feed via Excel. It's mostly a thing for me of entering it and being able to do it in a timely fashion. Herd tracks is more set up to do it on the feed truck and. It is online and it also has an offline capability so you can, when you're processing cattle for example, similar to the system that we just saw, everything gets, gets called up immediately and, and there is an offline version available as well. I think it's a matter of having the opportunity to do it. It, it allows you to actually even do it. I, I don't know how we could do it with, with just, without the technology that's available to us now. In all, our producers, the cost to them is $15 a head to basically get that kind of analysis and to get a fairly substantial book at the end of the year of, um, of, of what their cattle, cattle's performance was, was during 
actually not just this year, but uh, any previous calves that, that uh, are on the system. That probably about covers it. I could potentially show some stuff on a computer. I could log into our system and whatnot, but um, I guess we could do that if there's any questions or whatnot, but that about sums it up, what we do. Good morning. I'm Ryan Casco. Uh, thanks to Leanne, she invited me to come speak today. And she doesn't know me, and this is the first time I've met her. She doesn't know anything about our operation, I don't think. But uh, she asked me to speak uh, about the technology we use in our feedlot. We're not doing anything too special, but uh, um, I'm happy to show what we do. A lot of it you guys have seen. We've had a really good uh, couple days here and heard some good speakers that talk about interesting things. And, and I think the tour uh, yesterday at a brand new feedlot with really cool technology, it's, it's hard to beat. But uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we do and, and uh, hopefully you get something out of it. Um, I am from Lethbridge, uh, just outside of Lethbridge. My family has a cattle feeding business. And uh, in fact, it's exactly 20 years ago that we were kind of crunching the numbers that Bruce talked about uh, uh, deciding whether we should buy a feedlot and does it make economic sense. And I am a huge proponent of knowing what your costs of production are and also knowing what your, what your neighbors are, are uh, charging too so that you know if, whether your operation is going to be viable. So we kind of went through that 20 years ago. I didn't know very much about the cattle feeding business at all at the time, and uh, I've learned quite a bit, and I, I still realize that there's a lot more that uh, I have to learn, because things change so much. Uh, this year, uh, our company, as well as uh, four other shareholders, purchased the borderline feedlot at Ceylon, and we renamed it uh, Ceylon Gap Feeder, so we're excited to be in the Saskatchewan cattle feeding business as well. Um, I really believe that the Charles Darwin, uh, he was attributed to this quote that it's not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. And I think that's how I feel about the way I operate. I'm not that smart. I didn't grow up on a farm. Uh, I'm not that hard of a worker either. <laughs> but uh, we're willing to listen, and I try and hire good people to help us change. And, uh, keep up with things, and as we've seen over the last couple of days, there's a lot of change going on, and you need to be able to be flexible to do that. So I have a little bit of cattle feeding experience, because when I was about 12 or 13 years old, my dad rented a, like a two or 300 head feedlot down the road, and he was a cattle buyer, and my brother and I would go out and like literally scoop chop out of the, the grain bin and trudge down the, the alley and dump it into the Bunk. So, and actually, this is not a real picture because I guess we never took any pictures in those days, but I had my kids reenact this just so I could have an authentic <laughs> picture of us because back then we definitely did not have uh, concrete bunks or rails or anything. It was a pretty rundown feedlot, but uh, actually, I had my kids have mullets. They were wearing mullets just to show what I looked like in 1983. Um, and then when I got a little bit older, my dad built a, a small feedlot that held maybe about 400 head, and this is our first feed truck. So that was a big deal to, you know, we'd put uh, two scoops of silage in and press the grain on the auger for three minutes, and that's how you decided to feed. So um, our latest uh, feed truck is one of these jailers that we saw yesterday at Buffalo Plains, and, you know, just, it's incredible how sophisticated things are. We've got GPS systems in our trucks, and... Um, mix, we do the mixability tests, and we're getting things down to a pretty good science. And I really do think that in the next five years, we will eliminate feed truck drivers. You know, I think it's just inevitable that we're going to be more and more remotely controlled. So uh, we have a, a micro machine. We saw the Comco machine at uh, Buffalo Plains yesterday. We use that to <clears throat> provide the supplement to the cattle that we feed at our place. Um, Leanne asked me to talk about technology and 
uh, some of the technology that I think of may not be high tech, it's kind of low tech, but I think there's still some important things that we're doing, especially around animal handling. I think that's a big thing that we're doing. The Daniels Alley, again, Buffalo Plains had that, but I, for us, I think that's been a, a huge assist in keeping our workers safe and, and having cattle processed more effectively. We use a bud box as well, uh, sorting systems coming off of our squeezes. Uh, this is something that I haven't seen it a lot of places, but basically it's a, a dual alley going up to the, the loading chute at our, we have a feedlot at Tabor, and uh, like this is pretty low tech. It's actually probably the cheapest loading chute that we have out of it. We have four different feedlots, and, and uh, this one was really simple to make, but there's basically a gate on a hinge that, that the cattle take turns going up loading a truck and um, cheap and very effective. Uh, some of the software that we use, that we collect data for, uh, includes Linus 7, which is a risk management tool that we use. Uh, it uh, was created by John Lawton in Edmonton, who uh, owns Titan Livestock and AJL. Um, for us, it takes the software that we collect, like in a Greg system with ITS, all the feedlot software, all the data that you're collecting at the, uh, for your accounting of, of your feed. All of our rations get dumped into this risk management software. Uh, we also put all of our cattle inventory, so all the cattle that we own, that inventory gets put into this program. And it helps us assess different purchasing decisions. Um, so if we want to take a look at, uh, uh, feeding a yearling steer versus a, a calf steer or a, a heifer of different weights and at different times, we can. It helps us make the, uh, the best decision on, you know, what today's prices are, what our ration costs are, what kind of performance that we can expect, <clears throat> and uh, hopefully it helps us find that we're going to have a positive return on our investment. And the the other thing that we use this for is that because we have all of our inventory in it, it takes that inventory and and shows the months that they're going to be marketed. And so we put all of our, our contracts for in a, any finished cattle or any purchase contracts that we might have for feeder cattle. Uh, we can put our futures positions in. And so it's a really nice way of seeing all the different ways you're losing money because all of your losses can be you know, all on one page, so that's pretty handy. So. Uh, another thing that we've done is we created a database, uh, we call it Athena, uh, because we were collecting individual carcass data from Cargill, who we ship uh, a lot of our cattle to. They were sending us these data files, and you know, you know, the question is, what do you do with all this data? It's not really that good unless you can make sense of it, and, and it is a challenge. So we created a database where we put all of our, our uh, carcass data into, and then all of the feedlot software data that we collect through ITS, and, and we have a, another health program that we use called MedLogic, all of that gets uploaded into this system, and because of our EID tags, we can sync our individual carcass data with our feedlot uh, information, and uh, it's been, it, it's taken us a while to, to start to get some good use out of it, but uh, we hired uh, Dr. Steve Hendrick, who used to be uh, a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. He works with the Coldell Vet Clinic now too. Um, but he has helped us really refine the, the data that we're collecting. And uh, so some of the things that we may look at with that data are the impact of health challenges that we might have on individual animals, how that affects their, their performance, uh, determining what the optimal carcass weight is, and Really, a, a lot of what we're trying to do is uh, carcass-adjusted performance benchmarking. So it's fine to say that you know, my cattle gained 3.2 pounds a day and they converted at 6.3 or whatever, but uh, we're selling carcasses. And because cattle, when you ship them to plants, they'll yield at different rates and you might get premiums or discounts based on the, the quality of the cattle. How are you, you know, if you know that this guy, his cattle gained 3.2 and this guy was 3.5, whose cattle really did the best, that, you know, that this, his cattle might have yielded 62% and his were 59%. So we use our Athena to help us uh, uh, take out some of those variables and then I'm part of a group of four other cattle feeders and we compare all of our information. So 
You know, when I, I say, you want to know what your competition is doing, these guys are my friends, but they're my competition too, and I want to make sure that if they're doing a really good job on certain classes of cattle, I'm trying to understand how I can get to that level too. So, so we use Athena for that. <laughs> yeah, this is an example of some of the data that we would get back from Cargill. Like, it's just a, I think I've got, I looked at my records the other day, I've got about 350,000 head worth of data in my system. Like, and each animal has probably 40 or 50 data points, so it's very difficult to sort through it. Oh, this is my low-tech uh, but uh, valuable tool that I wanted to show you. Um, because technology doesn't necessarily have to have a, a battery, but uh, um, for all of you, I think you could get use out of, out of this technology, and it's basically, we, we took some rubber mats that we got from a dairy supply store in Lethbridge, Lethbridge Dairy Mart, and we just cut them up into strips and then wove them so when cattle come out of the chute, they don't slip. And you know, we've, we've used tires in the past, and it's really hard to get tires that match up nicely. Uh, we've used kind of steel grids, we've used sand, we've used wood chips, and so this is my $300 solution that's probably worth $10,000 to you, so you're welcome. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, yeah, Dr. Waldman, he kind of stole some of my stuff yesterday because uh, this is a, we used a drone to do our inventory count. This is on January the 31st. Uh, to count cattle at our feedlot for our year end. And yeah, it, it's very slick. Like, we have four feedlots, and so we would normally have our accountants go around to all and run out samples of pens and, and count the cattle and then weigh them. And, and it can easily take all day to do that. Risk of a broken leg, risk of someone getting hit, you know, whatever. Uh, so we flew all of our feedlots, including driving time to all of them. I think we were done in four hours and didn't have to disturb the cattle. Um, the other thing that we did that we're kind of experimenting with is we took a picture. This is an overhead view of our silage pit. And so he drew, our drone operator drew a, a line around the, the edge of the silage. We have uh, the height of the silage because he kind of made a 3D model of it. And to calculate the volume, we can take that volume, use the density calculation that we have, like so many pounds per cubic foot, and come up with an estimate of how much silage we have there. It's way safer than our accountants uh, who don't get out of the office much, climbing up on the silage pit and measuring things. So I think it was a pretty cool idea. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, we're, it is a people business, and these guys are, uh, even though they're getting fewer and far between, like a, a a good cow, cowboy and his dog is always good technology to have too. So we've got these guys still kicking around too. Um, yeah, and the motto in our group is to learn, grow, and enjoy. We try and do some of each, each day. So hopefully you guys got some of that out of our meetings this week. three panelists and uh, be able to, uh, I guess, get some answers to some of your questions. Um, we'll want to stay on time here because lunch is, is there already and most of you can probably smell it already. So um, thank you so much for your presentations. Uh, each one was different and informative and it, it obviously is working for each of you. Um, but I, uh, if those of you have any questions for each of the panelists is great. Um, I asked the panelists to repeat the question or if you can, to a point, so there's, because our, uh, the students online uh, may not be able to hear that, so is there anyone with questions out there before lunch? Yeah, I see it's lunch has overtaken their interest. <laughs> It'll be final call <laughs> for questions before lunch.
Yeah, we, well, we know exactly what we have in every pen, right. but it's... Can you repeat? Just, oh, re sorry. just repeat the question. Uh, the question was, uh, why are we... Why is our accountant or bank requiring that we do an inventory count when we should know through our systems what we have? Uh, and the, the answer is, yeah, we know exactly what we have in every pen, but in our business, our, our bank is requiring audited financial statements so that they want our accountants to verify that what we say we have is what we have. So, you know, I might say I've got 10,000 tons of silage there and I've got 4,500 straw bales, but we're, we go count it just to prove that we have it. And yeah, the other thing I was gonna mention too with that inventory count, like, um, I, just before I left for Moose Jaw, I got a bill from my accountant and they charged me full price for the inventory count. So <laughs> didn't really save me money, but it didn't run any cattle around. Okay, this, uh, this would conclude the uh, broadcast portion of the school. I'd like to thank the three panelists for uh, spending their time.